Hi, everybody. So Abby and I are going to talk about something fun today as well. Um, so hi, Abby. As well as what, honey? <laughs> as well as just spiritual stuff. I want to talk about some of the things that we do as creative spirits. And I want to introduce your books to the world, which they're already oh. out there, but I want people to know more about them. Um, and I'm going to introduce my book as well which is a series, but I only have one with me. So we're just going to, um, and it's so Abby has, and I'm going to put the links below for America and we can we like show and too. tell. Look, yeah. you got our, Yay. made a little, um, oops. Nice. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. tell us a little bit about this, Abby. <sighs> well, this is the entire novel. It's a bit like Game of Thrones size. <laughs> <It's huge. laughs> and um, it's based on having a spiritual crisis. So you have your awakening, then you have your transformation, and then you have your expansion. When I was originally writing this, expansion was going to be called embodiment, but that kind of didn't feel right, you know, because she's growing bigger and bigger. And it's got a main character whose name is Marissa, and she's kind of based on me, but she kind of isn't. And she's doing a lot of spiritual work. So she's training to be a psychotherapist. Her fiance left her just before they were to get married. She had an emotional breakdown. She's suffering from panic attacks and low level anxiety. So there's a lot of inner dialogue in the books because, you know, you want to learn how somebody else is learning. And there's scenes where she's going through Dublin. So it's set in Dublin, which I really like because I grew up here. And so yeah. there's places here like Stevens Green and, and, and Rath Mines and places that are familiar to me. And she'd be going and getting, you know, low level anxiety. So she's doing her mindfulness techniques in her inner dialogue. And we're all experiencing that. So you kind of get, you know, connected in to her and who she is. And then she has all of these spiritual experiences, such as meeting an angel working with clients and, and, and having weird things happen, serendipities, synchronicities, and discovering shamanism as a psychotherapist. And so as the reader is reading, you're brought along the journey with her. You're going to all the workshops. You're hearing all the spiritual wisdoms woven through. And it culminates, well, actually in transformation, I'll show you, she she's freaking out a little bit. She doesn't want to do the spiritual stuff. She's got an inner battle, which is, her magic is part of her, but yet she wants to be the mainstream psychotherapist. Like I've put her psychotherapy room on the back. Isn't that so cute? Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, but she's then she's meeting her, her guides. Where are they? Her guides in her special place where she goes on her shamanic journeys and learning how to use her inner compass to navigate what's going on so that she can expand and become really, truly who she is and encapsulate and bring everything that she knows into her herself and it's a huge journey to do that so it's a journey on the books as well but mm -hmm. thing is I'm not meandering in there I've written it like a thriller so I get complaints from people who are reading it because they can't put it down because they want to know what happened next and people who bought Awakening and read it before I had released the other book was like I need more I need more where's the rest of it so the good news is it's all here and <laughs> you can read them yes. one after the other and I'm recording at the moment transformation as an audible audio book. I've got Awakening is there as an audio book and I'm reading it myself. So it's kind of, it's fun to do that. It's, it's, it's yeah. a big job though. It's fun to do that. It is so, a big yeah. job. It is fun. I mean, the, I mean, these are hefty books, so you're going to have a lot of material to read, but they're so pertinent to right now. So well, I mean, it, it looks like a lot, but when you get into it, it flows and there's nothing in here that's not relevant and, and you're in her body and you just want to know more. What I've heard was really interesting is because people who have not been on a spiritual path, mm -hmm. but who read a lot have been the people that have helped me with the, the, you know, the early drafts. And one of one of my friends who read it said she felt like she was really there. There's this fantastic journey that she's going into all of this. It's like high, high viz. You know, yeah. like the top was it was it HD four, and and uh, she she saw things on the journey that I didn't write were in there, and she saw them. 
So I have to say I've woven magic into the book. You did. And when you're sitting with Marissa in a client session and an issue comes up with the client that relates to the reader, there's healing in the words so that if you read it and go through it and something will unlock in the reader so that they will heal something. I mean, there's an amazing session where this um, woman who's in her midlife, whose mother is dying, is distraught and, and very emotional because she's looking at her mother who's dying and Marissa does an exercise with her. So she doesn't project her entire memory of her mother throughout her whole life onto a woman who was sick and dying in bed but can remember the mother who was there when she was young can remember the mother who put little notes in her school lunches and can then work through the grief and be able to be in the room with the withering it's very sad you know but people have been through this with the mother and know that this is just the mother's body now and a lot of people don't think this way so that's what I want to get out the way to think the way to change how you frame things it's even a painting on her counseling room wall I don't think I put it in there which is of a ship in the water and there's a storm and one of the clients go in and so this is wicked and there's a bad guy over there in in, in the lighthouse and he's killed everybody and everybody's dead and it's like are you looking at the whole world like that because you see this in this painting and it's just ways to make you think you know so Mm -hmm. I'm hoping it'll just open people's minds because you know as we're going through expansion ourselves we're going through growth and evolution I think one of the most difficult pieces for people is to step back from their idea of what they think the world is made of Mm -hmm. and to say well maybe it isn't made of that maybe this isn't what it is and to be able to open up the potential and the possibility for it to be something else yeah. Yeah. And the thing is, is you're very magical anyway. And I think that's what we forget about because all of us, especially you guys that are watching, you have a lot of magic within you. And everything you do contains that magic. So everything you do is affecting other people with the magic energy that is you. You know, it's really interesting, honey, with my editor wanted me to reorganize the first few chapters of the book to make it all about she's devastated, her boyfriend left her, she's, you know, and and I had written it differently. I had written it that her boyfriend left her and broke her heart, yes, but still life wasn't right and that it was the magic that had left her was the issue, not the man. And so this Mm -hmm. is about, it's a sovereign being finding their sovereignty. It's about realizing that you know being magic is our birthright and somebody <clears throat> sorry somebody had said to me after they read it that they liked it the first way around better that it's like the collective is growing out of the magic relationship and you need a man to fulfill you and a man is you know is what gonna or a woman or your partner and you're, you have to be more than just you I said no she's doing pretty good on her own for a lot of yeah. it you know sure when she's not looking for somebody, somebody shows up, which is how it works in real life, because, mm-hmm. you know, you're, it's all about the energy that you're sending out there when you're desperate and needy. And it's really interesting because she has a friend who's like a normie who works in the office with her, a little blondie ponytail who's only interested in men. And over the three books, Sarah changes too, just by mm-hmm. being around Marissa. And then she stops looking for men. And somebody shows up for her as well. But not only that, she starts focusing on her career. She realizes she's enjoying learning stuff, you know, and it's all the things that we're told we need to do versus what we really want to do. And there's epiphanies and openings in many of the characters along the way. And um, actually, Marissa makes a whole bunch of friends at her shamanic workshop, and they've all taken on a life of their own, too, for me. So I've been asked, you know, are you going to write a story about what happens next to Martin? What's going to happen to Terry? And I'm like, oh, my gosh. <laughs> so you could. you're a great storyteller. We did some stuff together in Morocco and Abby wrote stories about it. It's just fabulous. So, yeah, I might publish a couple of those. I've entered some competitions for short stories. And so I don't know if I'm able to publish it yet while I'm still in the process of the competition. But I've written short stories in this one which Honey only just saw a second ago, called Planting the Seeds, Mm -hmm. a book of poetry, short stories and prayers. And, um, you know, here's one here is a really short one. I could read a poem. Yeah. Because um, it's called Box. And this actually is written 
on a course of healing where you go down into the depths of despair and then come out of it. It's like a dark night of the soul. And then you come back up and then you're at a higher frequency. So this one is called box. The box you're in also holds the ocean, the sunsets and the beaches. I walk there every day for hours. I'm usually in two places at once. I always have sand in my hair. Unless I'm lying on my bed alone, looking out the window, then I'm here and my heart, my heart turns inside out and the ocean comes to me. So, you know, it's all shamanic. It's all astral travel, you know, images Beautiful. and multidimensionality of, of, of our ability. I've got a fabulous story in here about this guy called Andrew who's plagued by fairies and they keep annoying him. And this is so funny. <laughs> Uh, some of it's based on client work actually which is interesting too so yeah it feels like you're pulling someone into a dream you know yeah come dream with me come see what this feels like and as our third eye just keeps on opening and becoming more practice like we're able to see more it's changing the way that we read things and look at things that's really a lot of fun it the is, but then, is you know, the whole up. thing, yeah, the thing about being an observer, you know, is really interesting. And I think as well, because we're questioning who we are more now, we need to fill the world with new mythologies, with new stories, new possibilities and potentials. It's kind of there already in hints and mainstream, but I think the stronger voices are those who can speak with experience and those who bring in the magic and put it in to the words themselves and you, you, yeah it's mm -hmm. interesting we're pulling them into the dream that's what my friend said that she could see stuff there that I hadn't actually said was there yeah so. yeah that's what it felt like it was like oh I could feel myself right there yeah but then yeah. you're you said you've written for children as well yeah so I have a few books pictures. that are not published but I have a children's book that I wrote with my dad and I'll put this underneath as well and it's about a planet um, that didn't get stars. So it's a really great book. And it really does illustrate who we are. And it's kind of interesting because we wrote it about 20 years ago. Probably longer at this point. So it's incredible, isn't it? Yeah. And then illustrated it and put it out. And there's a sequel. And then there's a third one that's not out yet. I haven't taken the time to concentrate on the writing. But he's got so much material um, that needs to go out. He loves to write poetry every day. Every day he's writing poetry. Um, and his his poems end up in the newsletter. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, you know, the way I see these are like visionary um, recipes, almost the way that we put the words together to bring in those frequencies mm -hmm. to pave it's, the way. And I had to pull over one day because the, the book started coming in and I was on the way to work and I worked like 30 miles away from where I lived. So I'm on the side of the highway looking for a napkin writing, <laughs> you know. So, and just being creative is so massive for our growth. Like that's who we really are as creator beings. So anything <clears> you can do to create, I feel like to me, it's more like meditation. It's interesting. I'm thinking as you're, as you're speaking there about all the people watching this who are either writing a book and haven't got it written yet or want to write a book, know that they have a book and the book hasn't come through yet. And um, it's really interesting, the process of it. It's for me, it's like, you know, the Wizard of Oz, when the big bubble comes down and there's the, the fairy godmother is in it. To me, the oh, book yeah. is the big bubble and it will speak to you. So for me, I mean, look at the size of these. I didn't know they were going to be this big. And I sat down and the bubble of the book came and sat beside me almost in me on top of me and mm -hmm. spoke to me and I'm just writing what it's saying and maybe if you're stuck in your process and there's a book there maybe you're trying from your head too much maybe what to do is take a step back and say okay what is the book that wants me to write it instead of the book that I want to write 
you know, because we get so fixed on what we want that it's not working. It gets clunky and stuck. But if we take a step back and say, okay, the book that wants me to write it, I'm ready now. I'm here. I'm available. And then just sit and listen. Yeah. Sit and listen. And whatever, it could be a painting. It could be any of that stuff. I know what my mom is an amazing artist and it looks like something you've never seen before, but it is um, totally channeled. So she's like in a whole nother world when she's making artwork. Yeah, you go into another place. Yeah. My daughter plays, plays music. She plays the piano. And she says she just sits there and two hours go past and she doesn't even notice, mm -hmm. you know, and for me, I look at her, she's looking at her fingers, looking at the notes, putting them together. And then she has the whole piece. It's like, she's remembering. So I think many of us <clears throat> have these gifts that we haven't given the time and space to do. Cause yeah. we think what we've been doing is so much more important than this, but it isn't. And I love what you have said, honey, before and several times oh, across several videos where you say what we've been valuing isn't as important as what we're going to be doing next, which is more creating, more from fun, more from love, more from joy. Mm -hmm. Our healing cool. session together is going to help people get connected into that energy in themselves. Yeah. yeah, we're about to do a big activation for people and a big like peeling away of the layers. So that link will be below too. But um, it's just being your real self all those little things that you wanted to do when you were a kid and they came through so strong and then they were taken away by the weird life that most of us have lived. It feels like the older we are, the more weird the programming was, like there was more of it. Although I do see with some of the generations, the tech programming has been more intense too. Mm -hmm. Um, but just letting go of that stuff is so wonderful. And I find that doing anything creative is also like a meditation because you're basically channeling your higher being into your body and just creating. Yeah. And you know, if you, if you were to approach it, like it hasn't been taken away, it's just locked in another room. So I'm going to open all the doors and then you might need some help with opening the doors then come to our session, but then it comes into your field and it becomes more in front of you. What gets in the way then is your head, because you think you have to write, let's say a finished book where you're going to hand it to someone to read. You don't, you don't do that. You write the vomit draft, which is yeah. one that nobody ever sees only you. This is what I've done. I wrote the, wrote the book and then I wrote it again fixing everything then I had an editor look at it and then they send it back to me and we did another draft you know so you're never going to have to write from nothing the final final or you know the, the painting you could be working on the same painting over and over and over again until it feels this is it this is the piece this is it to allow yourself the playfulness that a child yeah. would have to make mistakes and throw it away and try it again and put paint on top of paint and sound on top of sound until you know and to play and to because because as adults, we're like too much in our little box. No, it has to be like this, what we think it is. And it's not that, you know, the yeah. best creativity is heart centered. Mm -hmm. so. We want it to be too perfect too. And if we think about um, how many lifetimes we've all had, you've got all this experience to actually draw on if you just let it in, mm. you know, so. Draw on that. Are you telling jokes now? <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> Just let it let it come in. <laughs> Enjoy. Draw it out of yourself, literally, mm -hmm. and to understand also that when you start, if you're drawing or you're writing, what you're what you're what you're purging first could be crap, you know, because you yeah. have to get it out of your system. To get it out of your, I mean, like Honey said, her book is so, you know, because she's been doing this for years and I've been writing since I was, could have a, a pen, you know, some of my poems I've been doing since I was what, 13, 14 years old. Yeah. So, you know, you, you, you get it out of your system and then suddenly all the good stuff starts to come in and it's like, ah, that's because my head is not telling me what to write. My heart is now opening up and it's coming through that way. So true. So, yeah. And the stuff that we do when we're little is so pure. 
and we're not really judging ourselves. So just try and get into that mode. Like I would write little funny songs about, and they were terrible. <laughs> but I loved them and I'd run around and sing them, you know, when I was like five or whatever. So just enjoy it. Just enjoy being silly. And you'll find some beautiful nuggets in there. Yeah. Yeah, no, we should be celebrating ourselves, celebrating the magic that we have. And what's wonderful too about the technology that we have now is that I can go and self-publish whatever yeah. I feel needs through. And there are so many groups out there to help you do it too. There's 64,000 people in a group on Facebook just about self-publishing to help with anything you, you, you ever needed to know wow. about doing that. You know, it's incredible. And the, these communities are so helpful and, and kind and supportive. So yeah, because the tech scares people. Even me, like I had somebody else load this, you know, <laughs> I had somebody else do it so that I, because I was intimidated by the tech at that point, but it, it starts to go away. Like you start to figure it out on your own. You really, yeah. Yeah. It does. And, and it yeah. does enrich your life too. So, mm -hmm. you know, I'm finding at the moment now I'm, I've got an idea for a new book. And it's like a side book to this main novel. And I think my main character will appear in it briefly. But you won't have had to have read all the other one as a lead in to, to have oh, it. To just bring in the yeah. playing of possibilities and what could be. And it's again, it's another way to rewrite the fabric of who we are and what we could be and what we're not. And um, playing around with that. So, yeah, it's good. It's fun. It is good. And there's so many ways that we can get to who we are. You know, there's so many ways. And the biggest way is to play. That's how we learn the best. And that's, you know, everything comes back to be who you are and enjoy your life. Like find joy. So, Finding joy. Yeah. But you see, I've written already. I've, I've written, I think about 13 books before this I've done my big books would be like manuals for how to live mm -hmm. so there's a book on energy healing energy healing for everyone that's two and spiritual tips for enlightenment that you can just open up and read so I got all of those in and then I've done how to be well which is managing your day-to-day -day and heal your inner wounds and I thought well I could continue down that genre and just write well how to do this and how to be this and for me I don't like to talk about it I like to do it with you but then I thought well I've got everything I need here and how to be well in your day-to-day -day and heal your inner wounds so I thought well how else do we heal and that's where the stories came in but I do a diary as well which is something that's based on astrology, the astrology of the year. And I'm currently for the first time self-publishing my next diary because of other circumstances, as I'm yeah. sure people can imagine that it's, I did have a publisher for this, but what's really incredible is now I'm going to be self-publishing the diary. I can put so much more into it. Yeah. So I'm going to have interactivity this time, honey, where I said, okay, here's an exercise for the theme for the month. Here's a QR code go here and you get a meditation. That's me talking you through the exercise. And it's really exciting. I'm going to be making wallpaper as well for people for their phones to learn how to bring in frequency and energy to keep you going through the day. So I kind of like yeah. that people can do more things now and to give them the responsibility to show up and do it for themselves is really important too. Right. Exactly. And it's more holistic. Like all of us, when we do stuff, like if you're creative and I'm sure pretty much everybody in the audience is creative. If you're creative, you don't want to just do one creative thing. You want to do all of them. So <laughs> go for it is what I say. I don't know. I want to do every craft that there is. I, you know, all of the stuff that is play just do it and enjoy it and find yourself in the process because your inner child as it heals will become this like aspect of you that's an asset instead of this little being that's like wounded and holding you back 
I'll give you an example of that. Um, because <clears throat> traditionally we've all been conditioned, or I should say conditionally, to meet people for food. I'm gonna meet you for lunch, I'm gonna meet you for dinner, I'm meet you for brunch. So I wasn't gonna do that with somebody. It was my daughter, and I said, let's go and make silver, do a silver workshop. Nice. So we went and we made silver pendants together in a silver workshop instead of going out for dinner. And it was so fun. We got to keep something afterwards. Then we did it again. We made bath bombs in another one. You can go in and make bath bombs. So if you go, you know, making fun and say, okay, I'm going to meet you. Let's, let's go and do this workshop together. And then we can go somewhere and, and talk afterwards. It's really, really good fun to see what's in your area and what you could do. That's different that you've never done. Go to a pottery class just to yeah. see, get, get your hands messy. Yeah. Yeah. And it's just enjoy it. Like, and don't worry about how great you are. At it either. I had a friend who he died and I miss him very much. His name was Finbar and I loved him dearly. And he mm -hmm. was a viola player and his father runs a music school in County Cork in Ireland. And his father was running the music school in such a beautiful way where you bring your little kids into the music school and you could just imagine a big room with all the instruments strewn everywhere and just to watch and see where the kids would go and what instruments that they were drawn to but he wouldn't make them specialize in anything for a year because you could imagine a piano is very different to learning a wind instrument is different too you know so let them all play and then knowing you know, knowing the kid after a year, seeing what they were drawn to, then maybe narrowing it down rather than being a specialization. Whereas for us, it's like you choose what you want to end up as and you just follow the pathway there without getting any wider in your experiences to say, well, okay, I've never done a silver work class. There's no class for that in college. I need to go and be a scientist. So there's no point even making time for it. So we're shutting all these doors off yeah. to ourselves. It's really interesting the way that the kids were learning music in, in the Quark Academy, because if, it just made me imagine, honey, that if we were on another planet and this was how the ETs were bringing their children up, that they would just have a whole room and a whole library with everything there and just let the kids go crazy and wild and anywhere they ended up and kept going back to would be what they would end up learning. Yeah, it just is so much, you know, because you're going to have people who want to be carpenters and electricians and build things and make things. And you're going to have people who want to be writers and singers. And yeah, it's amazing. I think there are little kids on like, you know, you'll see them on YouTube or whatever. And they've got they know how to play like five dis different instruments. They know how to mix their music. They know how to do all of this stuff. And you're like, wow. And that's probably because all those instruments were available to them and they got to actually play. Yeah. But, yeah. It's interesting too. My kids have been interested in things that are not on the school curriculum, like Japanese and Korean and cooking. And so we just do it at home and give them the mm -hmm. space to learn anything that they feel drawn to rather than saying, no, you have to focus on this and you have to do that, you know? So when you're good at something, you're not necessarily good at everything either. So to yeah. not be upset about that. And that whole yeah. paradigm is going away. So yeah, that's why people are like, well, I don't really want to work there anymore. I'm just going to leave, you know, or <laughs> yeah, there's so much of that. Like people are learning how to honor who they are right now. And it's beautiful. So It is. It's also scary. Because yeah. you take that risk, but in healing and in everything else, if you don't clear the space out, then the new things can't really come in. There's nowhere for them to land. So you exactly. have to be able to be with that space of nothingness for a while mm -hmm. until you start feeling the pull of your heart where it's pulling you into whatever it is that you didn't expect. And uh, yeah, yeah, it's really fun. It is fun. And that's what happened to me. Like I had to let go of my normie job that's what's happening to without income for quite a while yeah you know you go through no, i mean it, it it doesn't happen easily mm -mm. and there can be an inner battle going on as to what you think you should be doing versus what you really want to be doing versus who you think you are versus who you actually are you know and to give yourself the time and space for that and i think what's really interesting if we look at how society is enslaving us to the job 
that it's the poverty consciousness that keeps us from exploring our gifts and talents because we're afraid to even come to the realization that we might not like our job therefore we might need to leave therefore how do we make money to survive and get and there are real world issues i mean the reality is that people do have mortgages and things to pay but here's the other thing once once you know more about who you are and once what you do doesn't feel like a chore then everything kind of lifts and opens up mm-hmm. and it can be mental it doesn't have to be a big sudden change no it doesn't And I do think it is speeding up right now. People are learning how to do that and they're stepping into it more and more now. Um, But it is something you have to step into. You have to take that initial leap. Or get your toe wet. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, because I always thought, oh, well, I'll just do my normal job and then I'll create something and then it'll teeter-totter in and then I can just slide right into it because it'll be ready for me that is not how it worked no yeah so it was interesting the process of it all but I think all of the other jobs that I had that wasn't doing what I do now all have influenced me and shaped me to be able to do more and better now than what I did Mm -hmm. so everything's for a reason and trusting that is for a reason but you can put it all to one side make that space and say okay what what you know where should I go now how can I be more of service now um where can I go next and here's the thing if you can't receive the information if you can't really connect into that inner knowing then you have to start with that and say please remove the blocks from me connecting please remove the blocks from me letting go of this why am I clinging so fiercely to what I know doesn't suit me anymore and to stare those things down and say, okay, this is a valid fear. This is not a valid fear. This is something that my brain is making up. This is something that I can make a plan around so that it would be easier for me to deal with it. And I have step one, two, three, four, and five and people to support me in this, you know? So yeah. Yeah. And we're not living our best life now. Then when are we going to do it? Yeah. Yeah. It's time. We're stepping into something that's totally brand new. I mean, that's the whole purpose of why we came here as a group. You know, so it's a beautiful. That's why we always want to help. Yeah. Yeah, it really is. Yeah. Yeah, it really is. Thank you, Abby. Thank you for sharing your books. And well, thank you for giving me the opportunity. I get shy about talking about them. You know, when I was little, you know, you're talking about when you're little, I just wanted to be in like the ivory tower somewhere, just writing, writing, writing and sending the books out and writing the next one and not having to actually talk about them. (laughs) So that's stretching me, but I need to do it because how is anybody going to know that they're there? You know, so yeah, it's good. So thank you for the opportunity. Sure. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for coming and talking about that. I think it's so important, our creativity. It's something to step into right now. And it'll change who we are and how we feel about ourselves, too. That's true. Yeah, that's true. Uh, Yeah, it makes you feel much happier knowing you're going to do something that you love because you know what it is. But, you know, I've had clients and I think I've even had people in that Marissa meets in the novels who don't even know what color they like the best or, you know, what kind of food they want to eat because they've just been doing what they've been told to do all their lives. So what's beautiful yeah. about now is all of that is lifting up and it's getting so much easier to, to, yeah. to, to really connect into the truth of who you are. And if you're uncomfortable, just start small. Yeah, well, you have to. Yeah. You really mm-hmm. do. Yeah. Thank you, Abby. Thank you, honey. Bye, everybody. Bye.